I'll never forget the first orange moment I had. Standing on the backside of Anchor Wat, I could see in the distance four or five monks walking across that beautiful green grass. And now, Caring for Cambodia's thousands of volunteers around the world continue to help a country in need. We care, we make a difference, we promise to come back. We do. The first time I went to see him read was in January of 2003 with my best friend Virginia and her daughter. We had intended to go there on vacation and have a good time and see the magnificent temples and learn about the history of that country. What happened was something I didn't expect. When I first met Samity, our guide, we drove from the hotel out to the temples. You could see villages with little kids running around, no shoes, no shirts, people zipping by on motorcycles with three, four kids on one motorcycle with a parent. I didn't really know anything about the history of Cambodia. I'd heard a little bit about the Khmer Rouge and I knew of the movie The Killing Field. So I knew that there was a genocide that had gone on. And as I asked Samity more about the history of Cambodia and not just about the temples, I learned his story, which was one of brutality. And I soon realized it was not only his story, it was many, many Cambodian stories. And as I was staring at monks in these bright orange robes, and it was right about then that a little girl came up to me, and she was eight or nine years old, disheveled, dirty little thing, thin t-shirt, her hair was all a mess, and she said, excuse me, ma'am, can I have a dollar? I asked her what she wanted the dollar for, and she told me she wanted it to go to school. And I looked at her, and I thought for a second, you know, kids have been asking me for things all morning, hey lady, buy a t-shirt, hey will you buy a book? But when I looked into her eyes, I realized she was really not asking for a dollar, she was asking for hope. It was at that moment my entire life changed. And little Stray Lynn took me to her school that afternoon. I saw what kind of conditions those children went to school in. And I decided at that moment that I was going to do whatever I could to help that country. The energy was unbelievable. The excitement that she was able to generate with everybody was truly remarkable. I came back to Singapore with my mind racing. I called my friends, I invited them over, and I said, gals, we have to do something. And in a few days, Caring for Cambodia was formed. We put the word out and asked for backpacks and school supplies. And so we were able to give away all those items to hundreds of children. It changed our life on that first trip in those first days, not knowing that 10 years later it'd be tenfold. I realized as I was going back and forth to Cambodia that we really needed somebody on the ground. I asked Samini, did he know of anyone that could help me to find a place where we could build a school or help a school that was in need? And it was in just a few weeks that I met Savvy. I saw a spark in a man's eye that I had never seen before. He's a visionary. We first met at the hotel and talked about so the school about helping the children and, and then they make a commitment to help the children. I passed me a small piece of paper with the number of 2,000 on it. And when I asked them what the piece of paper for, and they said, there is a check and you can get the money from the bank and start building the new school. And I said, just what building a new school? I'm sure he was thinking, who is this crazy white lady coming back and forth? But he knew, in building a relationship with us, that it was about trust. I just met Jamie and Bill, and when they left, I was so worried. Because the building cost a lot. If they didn't send enough money for the whole building, what will happen? And because we just met for half an hour, and also Jamie and Bill must be very nervous as well, because they didn't know me. And if I took the money and left, what will happen? So this is the kind, I think it's through, a little bit, through short time, but we trust each other and the big building is happening. I remember the first school that we had there and the ribbon cutting and it was a huge deal. Stop me on the corner, swear you hit me like a vision, I, I, I wasn't expecting. Who am I to tell Faye where it's supposed to go with it? Don't you blink, you might miss it. See, we 
got a right to just love it or leave it. You find it and keep it, 'cause it ain't every day you get the chance to say. I think our Food for Thought program, not only do we see the physical change and the look of our children and the clear eyes, bright eyes, growth, well developed, we also see that ability to sustain the learning process within the classroom. I've never seen it, but I found this love, I'm gonna feed it. You better believe I'm gonna treat it better than anything I've ever had. We put these two pieces of a puzzle together. We had educators in classrooms in Cambodia who weren't quite sure what they were supposed to be doing. And we had this educational excellence in Singapore. And so as an education committee, we immediately started to look at the idea of building a bridge between those two communities. Volunteers are the backbone of caring for Cambodia. We have hundreds of people that work full time, don't ask for anything in return. They run everything. Having somebody on the ground day to day was an absolute game changer for our teacher training. The other thing that happens is the identification of superstar Cambodian teachers. And they became mentor teachers, developing them as the future teacher trainers. There was a great need in the village for the mums to be hearing the same information that children were learning at school. Hygiene, praise, reinforcement, many of them didn't have a role model. And so the emphasis on the preschool program was educating the mothers alongside their small children. We encourage our volunteers to go and see our school. Over the past 10 years, we've had lots of different volunteer trips. Make a difference, it's a mad trip. Last year, there were nearly 700 visitors. We want to be partners in change. It's not about giving them a handout, it's about giving them a hand up. We set out a long time ago to put goals in place to become de facto standard for Cambodia education from K through 12. So we enlisted Lehigh to actually help us bring up our standards in high school as we have in the primary school. People mostly, they don't know what they need. They have no idea. So we have to guide them. 10 years time, this is the great outcome. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you around the world who have helped to make Caring for Cambodia such a success. It is really only with your help and support and all the love you've given that we can continue to do what we do. So thank you. Akuntra, here's to the next 10 years of caring. Like a gun, brighter than the sun.